this guy turned 50 today. It's his birthday. He's not going to look at the camera. It's his birthday. Don't. Yeah, Tara's very happy that I'm 50 now. He's AARP eligible. Mama. You are. We can get the early bird at Denny's. Stop making us. You're, you're just. You're making me feel old here, too. Okay? Just stop it. Just stop. <laughs> anyway, it's his birthday. So everybody happy, say happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dan. Dan. Thank you. We went to New York for the weekend. I took him to the Empire State Building, and then we went to the Museum of Sex. And why, didn't you, why didn't you throw a penny? Because I'm not a murderer. Well, it didn't necessarily have to hit a person. You could hit, like, a car or something. I don't want to do that either. Could you could... has to leave then, too. They, they, they have people that patrol the whole observation deck, probably to watch for that sort of thing. Could you, you, could, you could, like, put the dent in the entire roof of a car. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think we would have gotten removed from the building. Yeah. Yes, there is a Museum of Sex oh. in New York City, and they had an erotic carnival. And you probably saw on Twitter that I rode a mechanical bull. Why did you do that? Because it was there. And uh, Dan beat me in a jerk-off contest. He did. He did. They had... Basically, glory hole whack-a-mole. So they had one whole wall that was fake bathroom stalls. And the stalls had holes in the wall. And books came out. And there were six holes. And you were on a timer. You had to compete against somebody. And at varying intervals, books would come out of the wall. And you had to tug them up to three times each for a score. And whoever had the high score at the end won. And he beat me. Now, you have to tell him the best part of that night. It wasn't us playing. It was the little Italian chicks or Brazilian. Is that really what you do to dance? Yes, kids? there were these, these <laughs> lo lovely young girls who decided to play, and one of the girls didn't understand the game, and she was punching. Like, dance. punching them right in the head. And the poor guy working that game was like, no, no, you don't punch them. Is that how you jerk guys off? <laughs> she did not win. Yeah, she didn't. She did not do well at all. You know, Tara, pretty much everything you just said, we could just subtitle late stage capitalism. <laughs> just all of that. All of that. Yeah. We are a vomitorium away from a decline and fall, okay? Just a yeah. few lead lined aqueducts, and we're done. I mean, yes, we already were. <laughs> Uh, but it was his birthday. It is his birthday. Happy freaking birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Let's get to the bit. Jesus Christ. You know, I could hear crickets and cars. Oh, no. Oh, no. I forgot to shut the window. You hit the window for me? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's all, it's been lovely here weather wise, so we have the window open, but we forgot to close it. Sorry, I'm impressed you can hear the crickets. There you go. Uh, thank you. All right. Oh, there you go. Intro. Each week, gather in the Radio Dead Air audience, go off the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, so. We're going to start with a little bit of irony. I, I kind of love our opening story in, in, in a way that when you see it, you will understand. This this is this is a blessed moment. Hashtag blessed. Um, let's all let's all just savor this one, shall we? Um, man's pickup stolen while he was robbing a store. Oh, no. Kennewick Police Day. <laughs> Kennewick, Washington. A Tri-Cities man experienced instant karma over the weekend. That's not how that works. When his pickup was stolen while he was robbing the business across the street. Incident unfolded around 6 a.m. Sunday when Kennewick Police responded to the uh, 500 block of East Brunel mm -hmm. Avenue 
reports of a vehicle theft. The vehicle's owner told officers someone had stolen his red 1992 Chevrolet pickup. The uh, owner had left his keys behind the seat, and a thief drove off with the truck. But after surveillance video was reviewed, please discover the reason the pickup tr uh, owner had left his truck. That's because he was off stealing items for a business across the street. The owner was booked into Benton County Jail on a warrant and a new burglary charge, so he had a warrant out anyway, and he called the cops about his truck. Oh. And, and the last line is the best part. His pickup is still missing. <laughs> the truck is still at large. <laughs> oh! I kind of oh. want to find out that it was the owner of that business. But, like... They thought about foiling the robbery, but you know, that person could be armed and you don't know how dangerous that is, but they left the keys in their fucking truck. <laughs> I just, it's, I, that is, that is just a moment. That is, that is the, the stars aligning to tell you something. Yeah. You come out with your booty and your getaway car is gone. Why did you, why did he leave his keys in the getaway car? Yeah, you gotta take those with you. I mean, I, I can just imagine him standing out there with his ill-gotten gains and go, You can't trust anybody anymore! <laughs> <laughs> World's going to hell. World's going to hell! What's happened to us? <laughs> is this, is this irony? Is this, is this irony or does this... Is this, is, is this ironic? Technically, I don't think it's ironic. It's just funny. It's just funny. Uh. <laughs> I just, I, I kind of love the, the, the trust he placed in his fellow man as he's robbing them. My mom always used to scold me for leaving my purse on the pew when I went up for communion at church and i'm like if i can't trust people in mass not to steal my purse why are we coming here fast forward to all these scandals of the catholic church later and ahem. well it wasn't about purse stealing <laughs> <laughs> they're doing much worse shit than stealing purses your they're purse will be purse. fine though many you, horrors befalling the <laughs> Not so much, but your, your purse is going to be fine. Your kids? No, but the purse will be fine. Um, next up, holy wow. Okay. Um, we've had this story, oh, variants of this story, over and over and over. But the one thing missing from variants of this story over and over and over was the Autobahn. German boy eight takes car on 87 mile per hour joyride. No. An eight year old German boy stole his mother's car and took it for a nighttime drive at 87 miles per hour. That's 140 kilometers per hour along the highway. The child was discovered parked at a motorway along the A44 highway near the uh, Northwest German city of Soest in the early hours of Wednesday. Um, Boy's mother called police, alerting them that her son had taken her VW Golf, which has automatic transmission. The kid which is, is not, which is not as common over there as it is over in here. Over here, Europeans aren't as big on the automatic as we are. No, we had trouble finding an automatic car in Ireland. The kid's driving around. It's a VW Golf. I didn't even know it could go eighty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a knock on the model. I just, I have a Honda Fit. It can't go 87 miles an hour. It would explode. Um, when speaking to police after the incident, the boy reportedly said, quote, I just wanted to drive a little bit. Okay. Spokesperson for the uh, Soast North Rhine Westphalia police told CNN, boy, stop driving because he didn't feel comfortable driving on the motorway. We would regularly go go-karting and drive bumper cars, and had driven a car on a private property. It's not the same. 
Not the same. Not the same as going 90 on the highway. Why did you let the eight-year-old, why did you teach the eight-year-old how the car worked? Yeah, like, why are you, I know in rural areas, kids drive much younger. We've gotten scolded about that on the show before. Eight? But not eight. Not eight. Not, not eight. Sorry. Not eight. Not eight. Eight. Now I'm thinking of Carol Danvers in the go-kart, though. Flipping the go-kart into the hay bale. (laughs) Uh, 87 miles an hour. Jesus. Thank God that kid's okay. One more mile an hour, he would have gone back in time. Yeah. Um, next up, this is from uh, Pennsylvania. I don't understand how this plan was supposed to work, but apparently it did. Well, at least until it didn't. Former Macy's employee found hiding in a ceiling with stolen cash. The real mystery at first. How did someone get into the King of Prussia's Macy's overnight? Where was the person who stole at least $7,000 from the cash registers? Seemed like an inside job. Um, And according to Action News 6 ABC, that's just where Upper Marion police ended up finding the suspect after five hours of searching still inside the store. Hiding in the ceiling. Nicholas Redmond, 32, is now facing charges in connection with the early Sunday incident with two other similar thefts at the department store, totaling more than 12,000 in stolen cash. According to NBC10, Redmond was a former employee who had a set of keys and went in through the employee entrance after the store had closed the previous night. Police got a call of an intruder around 4.30 a.m. after five hours of searching the store with help of a canine unit. Police found a little-known ceiling access point. Officers uh, shimmied into the crawl space where they found Redmond with cash stuffed into his pockets and inside a Macy's bag. They say they took Redmond into custody. He admitted to two other similar thefts. Redmond had worked in loss prevention at the department store and had quit three weeks prior. All right, well, moving on from this dude uh we have you know i this next story i think i could see sarah doing this i don't know if i'd entirely blame her you would do this if it was spiders okay all right well no you know what no i would blame because it's not it's not this what she it's not what they did it's how they did it and we've got video um we oh good lord freaking idiots let me uh we got video there we go um massachusetts man sparked a fire on his family's <laughs> roof <laughs> he's trying to get rid of a pesky hornet's nest with a roman candle David uh, Schmida, I think I said that right, David Schmida of uh, Sturbridge, first tried using Raid, that didn't work, so he decided to use a firework instead. A video taken by his brother Matthew shows Dave firing three shots toward the hornet's nest into a corner of the roof of the third floor of their home. His first three shots missed, but the fourth hit its target. The hornet's nest went up in flames. He's hanging out a window to do this. No, he's hanging out a window to um, put put it out. Oh. Um, he went upstairs and put the fire out with a fire extinguisher. Dave uh, Schmida can be seen in the video leaning out of the window with a fire extinguisher in his hands. The roof suffered minimal damage. Some boards were burned, and now there's a hole in the house. Quote, I did get rid of the bees, so I would say mission accomplished. You know what's beautiful about him saying that? 
That's about as much mission accomplished as when W did the mission accomplished. <laughs> Can you imagine being this dude's wife? <laughs> and he's like, honey, you, you told me to get rid of the hornet's nest. I got rid of the hornet's nest. You got rid of the insulation. You got rid of that piece of wood over there. The pesky corner of the fucking roof, too, didn't you, Dave? And do you know what this video represents? Men? Well, not that, and... um. An insurance claim you can't try to, uh, to, yeah. to you've no blown your insurance claim. No calling that an accident because your brother put it on social fucking media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, we are far, no, fuck you. Farmers ain't fixing that. He's extremely lucky he was able to put that fire out. Seriously. Like, that could have been your goddamn house. Spoiler alert! Now look, I appreciate that's a fucking flammable. I appreciate being really freaked out by hornets because they are the mad demons of the they animal kingdom. Little pain machines, yeah. Yes. They, they they are horrible little creatures. They they are proof that there is no such thing as a good and loving it, deity of any sort. No, that's, no, 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 no. This this is true. This is true. There, there's a a philosopher, um, based just wrote a paper, um, disputing the existence of God, based on the a type of wasp that would lay its its egg inside another insect until the larva burst out, and would say no no good and loving creator would envision this creature. That's how bad wasps are. They've been used to disprove God. So I can understand this. And yet, I would come up with other methods to dissuade them. Yeah, like, I gotta say, I still can't understand it. What? Do you not have a power washer? Right! Or even just a hose. You know what? I. The, I would, right now, I could go outside and lay hands on um, this mold and mildew re remover I have for the outside of the house. It's like concentrated freaking bleach. And you hook it to the spray hose. That, that ain't, they ain't gonna survive that. But your house will. The house will, yes. Fire? Fire is not a thing your house enjoys. Fire is not a thing you should purposefully apply to your home. No. Like, yes, you need it for warmth and cooking, but it's not a thing that you should apply to your home. No. But, uh, uh moving on. Oh, okay. We, we got this, you know what? In this day and age, this, this sort of story is almost quaint. We haven't had one of these in a while. Aw. Man accused of shoving propane tanks, brisket in his pants, assaulting officers at Walmart. Okay. Man is accused How big of those pants. <laughs> Man is accused of shoving stolen propane tanks and sliced brisket in his pants before assaulting officers at the Walmart on Dickerson Pike. John Allen Honecker was charged with assault, theft of merchandise under $1,000, and public intoxication. Officers were at the Walmart uh, Loss Preventers Prevention Center on a separate call when they spotted Honecker on video shoving two propane bottles and a sliced brisket into his pants. The items That's were not how you play the three items at Walmart game. <laughs> the items were valued at approximately $35. That's not really a lot of money. Honaker gave up the items and sat in the loss prevention office. While detained, Honaker kept spitting inside the police vehicle and attempted to kick the windows out. He also tried to kick an officer's head in midsection when the hobble restraint was being applied to prevent him from continuing to kick the vehicle and bash his head on the plastic partition. Police noted Honaker had a strong odor of alcohol coming from his breath and body. He you don't say. He admitted to drinking, telling police, quote, 
Leave my drunk fucking ass alone while being detained. Counterpoint, no. <laughs> You're breaking the law. You stolen things and tried to beat the shit out of us. So we're not going to leave your drunk fucking ass alone. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. <laughs> I'm picturing the scene in the Edward Norton Hulk movie where he's trying to buy pants in like Ecuador. And he's like, Tienes mas stretchy. He's being like the dumb American who doesn't speak Spanish. Oh my god. Come on, man. Get some propane tanks. Really? I mean, your barbecue is going to suck. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to get rid of that hornet's nest either. Because this is why you don't drink in shop. Because you're going to do stupid shit like this. Over $35. And suddenly your ass is in the back of a cop car. I'm not even allowed to go grocery shopping sober. With him. Because, like, the bill goes up by at least $50. And the cart is full of cookies and donuts and crap we don't need. That is full of sugar. That I, And I totally do the little kid thing where I, like, sneak it in the cart when he's not looking. Yeah. And then it's on the belt, and he's like, I don't remember picking up these chocolate chip cookies. And I'm like, no, that's weird. So drunk, I would be a fucking nightmare. I love the mugshot, too. He's just that sort of a well. Here I am. Also, that haircut. <laughs> I don't understand why in the South, like... The purposeful hat head is a thing. <laughs> I've only noticed this in the South. It was on an episode of Bridezilla's too. This dude whose hair was like pasted to his head, except for little wings. <laughs> like, wh why do you guys do that down there? Why? It doesn't look good. Who are it's you asking? Come on. A Southerner. Oh, I I'm sorry. What? Who are you asking about the, the bad <laughs> hair? Come on now. I don't know. You know people down there. Ask them. What makes it's you... A, if you're from the South and you do this, just know that it's not attractive. Why do you assume I, I know people who don't understand how to use product? Come on. I, I'm just saying you know people in the South. <sighs> so statistically speaking, you probably know at least one person with bad hair. Shall we take a drive to rural New York and see if that exists up there. Oh, it probably does. So it's not just the South! <laughs> rural New York is the fucking South. Rural New York is West Virginia with more snow. Okay, it's literally north of us. But cosmically. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see, I see. So the South is just an insult. They don't realize that they're in the North. <laughs> They're lost. Okay. They're like the displaced as guardians. Okay. They're poor rednecks who got misplaced in upstate New York somehow. We've got one more tonight. Um, in the uh... place, Dan. I'm watching you now. <laughs> got one more in the I dare you to make less sense department. Um. From New Hampshire, man driving car full of balloons leads police on a chase to his own house. Chase ended when William Riley lost control of the car and crashed into his own garage. Oh no. Police in uh, Nash Nashua, New Hampshire, Nash uh, were led on a overnight chase by a man driving a car Stuffed full of balloons. And I'm going to show you, they're not kidding. No, that is stuffed full of balloons. State police relieved a call, uh, received a car, uh, call around 3.30 a.m. Report of hazardous driver. The uh, caller said the dark color sedan did not have any lights traveling northbound uh, in Nashua. Uh, police spotted the black Audi A4 near exit 8 and attempted to pull the car over. But the driver, later identified as 20-year-old William Riley, 
sped up as he tried to flee police. Police pursued the car with a Massachusetts license plate until the driver arrived at his Bedford home. As Riley pulled into the driveway, he lost control and crashed into the garage. He attempted to flee into the house, but was quickly apprehended by officers. He's facing several charges, including reckless operation, disobeying an officer. It's not clear what the balloons were for. The investigation is ongoing. Just what? because it's home doesn't mean they can't chase you. And it's not like home and hide and seek. Right. It's not home base. You're not safe. Like, it's not like, ha ha. And they're like, damn it. He made it. Now we're foiled. No. Also, I gotta say, driving with your lights out, it's a problem. Yeah. But it's a ticket. Yeah. That's all it is. You'd have gotten pulled over. To be fair, with the amount of balloons, he probably also would have gotten a ticket for lack of visibility. Okay, okay. But it's a ticket. Right. It's not a felony. You're not going to jail over it. It's a... Well, unless you... Unless you do the cop. Yeah. yeah. You could have just stopped, dealt with it, and gone on about your balloony balloon. way. Yeah. But, oh no, you had to, you were a daredevil. What was going on here is th there is a story that we're never going to know. I know. There's, there's some clown fetishists who had a very boring weekend. It's true. You can really get someone to deliver anything via the internet. I, 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 it's true. The Wawa on our corner is on Seamless. I can order fucking Wawa from Seamless. If you're yeah. not from the Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, Wawa is a convenience store with pretty upscale for convenience store food. Like their sandwiches are actually really good. Wawa is the stuff of legend. Yes. Fucking Seamless though. If I'm paying delivery fees, it's not going to be Wawa. I just... This is one of those stories that I'm just going to be like, it's, some of these get stuck in the back of my head. Two weeks from now, you're going to wake up at three in the morning and be like, but what were the balloons for? <laughs> what the fuck were the balloons for? We're going to be on our deathbed. Like, but what were the balloons for? And this asshole's only 20, so he'll still be alive. Unless he keeps driving like this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Anyone with information regarding this incident is asked to contact Trooper Samuel Fuller. And we have his phone number. I want to call him and ask him, sir, <laughs> I don't have any further information. I just got to know, what were the balloons for? I want to know if you have any further information. Do you have any further? Yes. Can you please tell us what happened? The internet wants to know. <laughs> the whole internet. We're, we're, we, are, we, have, we have come from the internet and we have questions. We do. I don't understand this. That is an embarrassment of balloons. It is. Last weekend at our at our vampire game, I had someone stealthily pick up balloons for Dan. And we were smart enough to put them in the trunk. So we could drive home. I guess I, the, the first thing we learned this week is that some of these stories stay with us and haunt us. I do. We are haunted. Honestly, I still think about the balloon popping fetishists. That All the was, time I think about that. That was half a decade ago, at least. I know, and I still think about those people that get off on popping balloons. We do that. We suffer for you, Internet. The internet. Compiling all this. Little pieces of our psyche that we will never see again. Um, we've oh. learned don't drink and shop. No. Um, we've learned there are, while you may feel compelled to go after the wasps with fire, it may not be the most effective use of your energies. You got to think about who's really going to hurt more in the long run. Right. Is, is it you 
Or is it the wasps? You got to think strategically. Um, we've learned that uh, ceiling employee is watching you uh, count the, the till. Um, <laughs> it's bad enough work in retail. You know you're being watched all the time. Dude, the ceiling, like, great, that, thanks, that, oh, computer Ronin, oh, what a feeling to be hiding in the ceiling. <laughs> that was, that was beautiful. That was. Well done. Um, we've learned that, uh, in Germany, the, the kids go fast. Yeah. That little bugger could draw. That, that this is, we don't have an autobahn. They go fucking hard in Germany. They adapt to it at an early age. They prepare themselves. That kid is they, that kid is gonna get on the racing circuit. Yeah. And finally, this this week we've learned um, sometimes. You 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 put you get back what you put out into the world. Rob the store, truck gets stolen. All kind of it it comes together. It's it's kind of a. It turns out the secret is true, <laughs> but the universe is an asshole. 